In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve thermodynamic problems associated with isobaric processes. So in this example, we have a gas that expands from 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 cubic meters at constant pressure. An isobaric process is one that occurs at constant pressure. How much work was performed by this gas? Now the formula that we need to calculate the work done by a gas as it expands or if it's being compressed at constant pressure is W equal P delta V. So the pressure in this example is 3 times 10 to the 5 pascals. And the change in volume, that's going to be the final volume, which is 0 0.05 cubic meters minus the initial volume of 0 0.01 cubic meters. So the change in volume is 0 0.04 multiplied by the pressure and so the work is going to equal 12,000 joules. Now you need to know that 1 pascal times 1 cubic meter is equal to a joule. So make sure you know that. Now the work is positive because the gas is expanded. And so work is being done by the system, not on the system. If the gas was being compressed, work would be done on the system and W would be negative. But because work is being done by the system, in physics, W is positive. Now let's move on to number two. Five moles of an ideal gas was heated at constant pressure from 27 degrees Celsius to 127 degrees Celsius. How much work was done by the gas? Now we know that work is equal to pressure times the change in volume. And according to the ideal gas law equation, pressure times volume is equal to nRT. So pressure multiplied by the change in volume is nR multiplied by the change in temperature. At constant pressure, if you increase the temperature, the volume will increase based on Charles' law, which is associated with this equation. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. So what we're going to do in this problem is we're going to replace P delta V with nR delta T. So to calculate the work that's required to heat up a gas, from 27 to 127 at constant pressure, you can use this formula. It's nR delta T. So in this example, N is 5 moles. R is 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. And the change in temperature, 127 minus 27, that's 100 Celsius, which is also a temperature difference of 100 Kelvin. If you convert these Celsius temperatures into Kelvin and subtract them, the change will still be 100 Kelvin. Now let's go ahead and multiply these three numbers. 5 times 8.3145 multiplied by 100. This is equal to 4,157 joules. So if you take a look at the units, Notice how the unit moles cancel, and also the unit Kelvin cancel in this equation. And so this will give us the unit in joules. So this is the answer for number two. Number three, nine moles of a monatomic gas expands from 60 liters to 120 liters at a constant pressure of 4 atm. Calculate the temperature of the gas at a volume of 60 and 120 liters. So to calculate the temperature, we can use the ideal gas law equation. PV is equal to nRT. So the pressure is 4 atm, and the initial volume is 60 liters. N is 9, and R is 0 0.08206 liters times atm per mole per Kelvin. And N is in moles. So our goal is to calculate the temperature in Kelvin. So notice how the unit matches. We have ATM in pressure, and for volume, it's in liters. And then the unit moles will cancel, so the temperature is going to be in Kelvin. So it's 4 times 60 divided by 9, and then divide that result by 0 0.08206. So the initial temperature is 325 Kelvin. It's really 324.965. But I'm going to round it to 325. 
to make things easier. Now let's calculate the second temperature, the final temperature at a volume of 120. Now we could use this equation again, but this time I'm going to use a different equation, Charles' Law. Now before we use it, let's see if we can get the answer conceptually. Notice that the volume increases from 60 liters to 120 liters. So it increases by a factor of 2. And whenever you increase the temperature of a gas at constant pressure, the volume will increase. So if the volume doubles, the Kelvin temperature should double as well. 325 times 2 is 650 Kelvin. So that's the answer we should get when using this equation. So let's go ahead and plug in what we have. So V1 is 60 liters, and that corresponds to a temperature of 325 Kelvin. V2 is 120 liters, and our goal is to calculate C2. So let's cross multiply. This is going to be 60 times T2, and then that's going to equal 120 times 325, which is 39,000. So T2 is 39,000 divided by 60. And so that will give you the final temperature, or T2, which is 650 Kelvin. So you'll get the same answer. Now let's move on to part B. Calculate the work performed by the gas. First, let's use this equation. W is equal to nR delta T at constant pressure. So in this example, we have 9 moles of gas. R is 8.3145 based on the units because we need it in joules per mole per Kelvin. And the change in temperature, that's going to be 650 Kelvin minus 325 Kelvin. So the change in temperature is 325 Kelvin. So 9 times 325 times 8.3145. So that means that the work is equal to 24,300 joules if we round it. So now let's use the other formula that we had in the beginning. So we can also calculate it using this equation. W is equal to P delta V. The pressure is 4 ATM and the change in volume the final volume is 120 liters minus the initial volume of 60 liters. So 120 minus 60 is 60, and 60 times 4 is 240. So it's 240 liters times ATM. However, the units are not the same. We need to convert it to joules. So you need to know that there's 101.3 joules per liter times 1 ATM. So 240 times 101.3, that will give us the same answer of approximately 24,300 joules. Now let's move on to the next part. That is part C. How much heat energy was absorbed by the gas? The formula that we need to calculate it is Q. And it's equal to N, the number of moles, times the molar heat capacity at constant pressure, because we're dealing with an isobaric process, multiplied by the change in temperature. Now we need to talk about CP and CV. So for a monatomic gas, CV is equal to 3 over 2 times R, and CP is equal to 5 over 2 times R. CP is always equal to CV plus R. Monatomic gases are gases composed of one atom, like helium, neon, argon, typically the noble gases. Now let's say if we have a diatomic gas, CV is going to be 5 over 2 times R. CP is 7 over 2 times R. Some examples of diatomic gases include hydrogen gas, nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, and so forth. So basically, it's a molecule that has two atoms. And then for, let's say, molecules with three atoms, the molar heat capacity is approximately 7 over 2 times R. 
So it begins to deviate at this point, and Cp is approximately 9 over 2r. So the deviations are fairly significant once you start dealing with gas molecules with three atoms or more. So for this particular problem, we're going to use this expression. Cp is 5 over 2 times r. Since we're dealing with a monoatomic gas. So let's calculate Cp first. So it's 5 over 2 times r. And so that's going to be 5 over 2 times 8.3145. And so that comes out to be 20.79 joules per mole per Kelvin. So now we can use this formula. So Q is going to equal N, the number of moles, which is 9, times Cp, which is 20.79 joules per mole per Kelvin. And the change in temperature, the temperature difference, 650 minus 325. So that's 325 Kelvin. So 9 times 20.79 times 325. That's equal to 60,800 joules, if you round it to three sig figs. So that's how we can calculate Q. That's it for part C. Now let's move on to part D. Calculate the change in the internal energy of the gas. So how can we do that? The first way that we could do so is using this formula. It's NCV delta T. So N is the number of moles, which is 9. The molar heat capacity at constant volume, that's 3 over 2 times R for a monoatomic gas, as we mentioned before. So it's going to be 3 over 2 multiplied by 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. And the change in temperature is 325 Kelvin. So 9 times 3 times 8.3145 times 325 divided by 2. This is equal to 36,500 joules. So that's the change in the internal energy of the system, at least one way to get the answer. Now, to get it another way, you could also use this equation. It's equal to Q minus W. So Q in this example is positive 60,800 joules. And W is positive 24,300 joules. So 60,800 minus 24,300, that's going to give us the same change in internal energy, which is 36,500 joules. So as you can see, there's multiple ways in which you can get the same answer. Now let's write a summary of the lessons that we've learned in this video so far. So let's start with a pressure volume diagram. Now, as we travel from position A to position B, the volume is increasing. So the gas is expanding. And during gas expansion, the work is positive. So the work is done by the gas or by the system. And the work is positive any time the volume is increasing at constant pressure. Now let's say if we're traveling from position C to position D. That is an isobaric process because the pressure is constant. But this time, the gas is being compressed. The volume is decreasing. And any time the volume is decreasing at constant pressure, the work is negative. So the work is done on the system as opposed to by the system. Now keep this in mind. As the temperature increases, the volume will increase. So that means that B is at a higher temperature than point A. A is at a lower temperature. So as you travel from left to right, the temperature increases, which causes the volume to increase at constant pressure. And you could use Charles' law to describe the relationship between volume 
and temperature. Now you can also use the ideal gas law to relate temperature with pressure and volume. Now keep this in mind, if your pressure is in ATM and if the volume is in liters, then R has to be 0 0.08206 liters times ATM per mole times Kelvin. Now if the pressure is in Pascals and if the volume is in cubic meters, then you should use this R value, 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. Now if you need to calculate the work for an isobaric process, if the volume is changing, you can use this formula. For an isobaric process, the change in pressure is zero, which means that the pressure is constant. Now, if you have a change in temperature at constant pressure, you can use this equation. So those are the two ways in which you can calculate the work performed by a gas or on a gas for an isobaric process. If you need to calculate the amount of heat energy absorbed or released, use this equation, NCP delta T since we're dealing with uh, constant pressure. And if you need to find the change in the internal energy of a system for any process, it's always NCV delta T. So this will always work if the temperature changes. Or you can calculate delta U by using this equation, Q minus W. So that will work as well. Now keep in mind, CP is always equal to CV plus R. And for monatomic gases like helium, neon, and argon, Cv is going to be 3 over 2R, and Cp is 5 over 2R. Now for diatomic gases like N2, O2, H2, Cv is 5 over 2R, and Cp is 7 over 2R. And for more complicated molecules with 3 atoms or more, or 3 atoms, let's just stick with that. Cv is approximately 7 over 2 times R, and Cp is approximately 9 over 2 times R. So those are some formulas that you want to keep in mind when dealing with isobaric processes.